Yeah, so this is Brody Hopkins. He's in Colombia, in South America right now, you guys. Currently in, and he uh, just visited the Amazon rainforest to do photography, yeah. which is pretty cool, right? But he's originally from Australia, so you might notice an accent. And uh, he's got a really, really cool presentation that he made just for you guys. So uh, take it away, Mr. Hopkins. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. Can I just get uh, a thumbs up to make sure everyone can hear me? All right. Fantastic. Loving the enthusiasm. All right. So hi, everyone. Um, as Mr. C mentioned, my name is Brody. I'm a photographer from Australia. And I just want to say thanks for having me today. I'm really looking forward to showing you some photography. I hope everyone is going to be able to understand me with my Australian accent. Or uh, should I say, I hope y'all are going to be able to understand me. Um, I actually maintain that Australians are just more efficient with our language than you guys are. Like an American might say, I'm going to go to the shops this afternoon. Whereas an Australian would say, I'm going to go shop Sabe. See how much quicker that was? It was just highly efficient. <laughs> anyway, I'll give you all a chance to make fun of my accent a bit later, but let's get stuck into it. So as I mentioned, I'm a photographer and while I do lots of different types of photography, one of my favorite types is macro photography. So for those who don't know, macro photography is the idea of taking close up photos of really small things in order to make them look really big. And quite often for me, those small things are bugs. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. But first, I just wanna get an idea of what everyone thinks of bugs. So onto the second slide there, please. Now, um, what I would like to do is just with a show of hands, can I get an idea of who thinks bugs are amazing, incredible, best thing ever? Put your hands up if you love bugs. Oh, we got one, oh, okay, yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, now put your hand up if you think bugs are okay. You're not really bothered by them, but you're not too interested in them either. Okay, couple of people. And lastly, put your hand up if you think bugs are disgusting, creepy, and you want them as far away from you as possible. Oh, I think, I think the disgusted people are, are winning. So um, what, my name, what my aim is today is to get as many of you as possible into that I love bugs category because bugs are some of the most interesting creatures on the planet. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some photos, some stories and facts about some of my favorite bugs. And bugs are particularly fantastic because they're a gateway into the rest of nature. So while it might be difficult to find lions or bears or snakes where you live, it's always super easy to find bugs wherever you are in the world. And I want to inspire you to keep an eye out for the hidden treasures that you can find all around you. Uh, there'll be some time for some questions at the end, but do also feel free to interrupt and pop your hand up to ask questions that you might have throughout the presentation as well. All right, let's get into it. First up, is my favorite bee on the planet. The blue bland, blanded bee, the, the blue blanded, ble, ble, the, the blue banded bee. Yes, there we go. Blue banded bees are adorably fuzzy flying teddy bears that are native to Australia. The females of this type of bee lead solitary lives and dig small nests in mud or dirt for themselves. But the males of this species, they sleep in clusters of up to 25 bees at night. And the best part is that in order to make sure they don't fall off during the night, the blue banded bees will chomp down on the branch in order to lock themselves in place, which is just absolutely adorable. All right, on to the next slide, please, Mr. C. So this next insect is the Cairns birdwing butterfly one of the most beautiful butterflies on the planet. Now, sometimes it can actually be quite difficult to tell the difference between a moth and a butterfly, particularly with some of the larger ones. But I'll give you a trick that works about 95% of the time, okay? So what you need to do is wait for the moth or the butterfly to land. And once it does, take a note of how it's sitting. 
If it has its wings open while it's sitting, it's probably a moth. If it has its wings closed, it's almost definitely a butterfly. So you'll notice that this bug has its wings closed, which is how we know it's a butterfly. But it's not just any butterfly. This is Australia's largest butterfly, and it has a wingspan of up to 15 centimetres. Wait, sorry, I just, I just remembered you guys don't use those. Um, so the rest of the world has this thing called a metric system. It's like 100 centimetres and a metre, 1,000 metres and a kilometre. Everything's neatly divided by 10. It's a, it's a great system. You should check it out sometime. <laughs> but I'll, I'll speak your language for today and let you know that this butterfly has a wingspan of about six inches or so, so pretty big. All right, on to the next photo, please. Now, these are some really beautiful butterflies, don't you think? Put your hand up if you agree that these are beautiful butterflies. Fantastic, I've tricked most of you. Um, for those that raised your hands, you need to pay a little bit more attention. These aren't beautiful butterflies, they're beautiful moths. Remember, wings open equals moth. Uh, don't worry, I set that one up to trick you. Uh, but also, I've included this photo because I wanted to demonstrate that moths can be really pretty as well. We often think of moths as the ugly cousin of the butterfly. But these green banded uranium moths show that that's definitely not always the case. Next slide, please, Mr. C. Okay, turning our attention now to baby moths, in other words, caterpillars. Believe it or not, the image on the left is not actually a close up of Donald Trump's toupee, it's a huge caterpillar that I photographed in the jungles of the Colombian Amazon. It was probably about the size of my hand. Now, I know what you're thinking. You wanna pat it, don't you? It's so fluffy that it's pretty much begging you for a scratch behind the ears. However, you should never, ever, ever cat pat a caterpillar, no matter how fluffy it looks. Caterpillars have what we call urticating hairs, which is science for don't touch or you'll be in a lot of pain. If you accidentally or deliberately touched either one of these two caterpillars, you would get a very nasty and very itchy rash that would last for several days. But that's in the best case scenario. Some caterpillars even have the ability to induce fevers and make you very, very sick. So while caterpillars are often really pretty and should definitely be admired, please don't touch them. Okay, on to the next slide. I'll start this one with a question to make sure that you all haven't fallen asleep. Put up your hand if you think you might know what this is. Even if you don't know what it is, have a go. You're all art students, get creative with your guesses. And I'll give you a clue. I promise it's not a piece of fluff that I pulled out of my sock. All right, we've got a few hands. What do we think? Maybe we'll just do it that way. There we go, sorry. All good. There we go. It looks like a spider egg. A spider egg? That's a really good guess. You're, you're pretty close. You're in the right realm, but not quite. Does anyone else want to have another guess? It looks like donut dough. And then like, you know, when you use a hot glue gun and it like goes like that and like the little string, it looks like it has that around it too. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Absolutely, cool. All right, another great guess, but not what we're looking for. I'll give you one more clue and see if anyone can get it. Or do you want, do you want the clue first or do you want to have a go? The clue first. <laughs> okay, okay. So we had a photo of a butterfly, then we had a photo of some moths and then some caterpillars. This photo kind of continues the series. Does that help or make it harder? Oh, caterpillar egg thing, something like that. Something like that, yeah. No, someone really thinks they know. Yeah, Adriana. 
<laughs> what was that? Cocoon. Cocoon. There we go. Correct. All right. So what we're looking at here is a cocoon or chrysalis, um, and it's a moth chrysalis. So in order to transform from a butterfly, am I on? Hang on. Yeah. Is my microphone on? I can't see it. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, in order to transform into a butterfly or a moth, caterpillars need to spend some time wrapped up in what we call a chrysalis or a cocoon. Um, this particular caterpillar has made an especially elaborate one using silk, similar to the silk that spiders have, in order to create this dangling masterpiece. In a week or two, it will burst out of its chrysalis as a fully grown moth, which is pretty cool. All right, moving on to another really cool insect, please. So next up is the praying mantis. And praying mantises are one of the most impressive insects on the planet. And there's more than 2,400 species of mantis worldwide, and they come in a range of colors and sizes. Some are bigger than your hand, and others are smaller than your fingernail. And they're amazing predators sometimes catching things that you think are way too big for them, like lizards, frogs, fish. There's even videos of them hunting small hummingbirds. So these insects can catch birds. The other really cool thing about mantises is that in the mantis world, the females are always the ones in charge. When mantises are mating, the female will often eat the male in order to gain more energy to raise her babies. In fact, and I swear this is true, a male mantis is actually able to continue mating after his head has been eaten. But it gets even crazier. There's one species of mantis called Brunner's stick mantis, which has done away with males altogether. Every single mantis of this species is female, and they reproduce by something called parthenogenesis which is a complicated biological process, but it's very similar to cloning. The female mantises basically clone themselves in order to create the next generation. The best part is I looked it up and this species of mantis can actually be found in your backyard. They live in Virginia Beach and the surrounding areas. So go out and find some. And if you do, please send me a photo. All right. Now it's time to head into to some truly crazy parts of nature. I hope this next story doesn't give you nightmares. So fungi or mushrooms, they reproduce by releasing spores into the air, which you can think of as tiny little bits of dust. For one particular fungus, it can only reproduce if the spore manages to get inside the brain of an unsuspecting insect usually an ant or a wasp. From there, the fungus takes control of the insect, keeping it alive, but turning it into a zombie, which it can basically drive around. The insect has no control of its movements whatsoever. The fungus has fully taken over. Next, the fungus walks the insect up to a suitable leaf and then forces it to bite down on the leaf, locking it in place. If you look closely at this photo, you'll see that the wasp is biting down on the leaf. Once it locks the insect in place, only then does the fungus kill the insect and explode out from its body, which you can see in this photo as the little white bits that are coming out of this wasp. Once it's done that, it starts releasing more spores so that it can start the whole process over again. But don't worry. There's been no records of this fungus infecting humans and turning them into zombies yet. All right, on to the next slide, please, Mr. C. Now, I have a question for all of you. I want to know, do any of you ever feel uncomfortable in your own skin? Do you ever feel like the old you isn't working anymore and you need to change things up a bit? Well, insects get this feeling all the time. And they've come up with a unique solution to it. Whenever an insect feels uncomfortable in its skin, it simply rips off its old skin and reveals a fresh new skin underneath. Mm. Now that I think about it, 
this probably isn't great advice for humans. Um, please don't pull off your skin if you're feeling uncomfortable. Anyway, uh, this series of images shows the exact moment that a Katie did or bush cricket finished removing its old skin and stepped into the world showcasing its fresh new outfit. Pretty cool. All right, now let's get into some scarier insects. Next slide, please, Mr. C. This photo here is a close up of a bullet ant. And bullet ants are special because they have the most painful sting of any insect in the world. If you're unfortunate enough to get stung by one of these ants, you'll have to endure 24 to 48 hours of unbearable agony. Now, you're probably wondering how we know it's the most painful. This is thanks to the amazing work of a scientist by the name of Justin Schmidt, who decided he was gonna dedicate his life to getting stung by stuff and then describing what it felt like. He's been stung more than a thousand times by over 150 different species of insect. And he ranked this ant right here as the worst of them all. In fact, there's even an indigenous tribe in the Brazilian Amazon who used these ants as part of an initiation ritual for boys who want to become warriors. The tribe members temporarily knock out the ants, sew hundreds of them into a pair of gloves with, and, and they have the stingers pointing inwards. The boys have to wear the gloves for five minutes as part of the ritual during which time the ants release a pheromone that encourages all of the other ants to sting together, resulting in a stinging frenzy. The boy's arms are left paralyzed for several hours and he'll hallucinate and shake uncontrollably for two days. Even more crazily, the boys have to go through this ritual 20 times in order to become a warrior. And they start as young as 13 years old. So if you have any students who are giving you trouble, Mr. C, you just let me know and I'll, I'll organize a bullet ant initiation ritual. That should uh, sort them out. <laughs> okay, on to the next slide. Let's talk about everyone's most hated insect, mosquitoes. That includes me. I can't stand mosquitoes, but they are interesting. I'll give them that. I want to start by asking whether anyone can tell me which of these mosquitoes is male and which one is female. Pop your hand up if you think you know the answer. Brenda, come on. You're unmuted. The one on the right is female and the one on the left is male. Oh, do you know Sorry. why? Sorry, what was that? I didn't quite hear you. The one on the right is female and the one on the left is male. That's correct. Do you know why? Because the female uh, has blood in it for its baby. That is absolutely spot on. Well done. So the one on the right is the female. And we know this because it's only the female mosquitoes that suck your blood. And they only do it to feed their babies. Mosquitoes themselves actually feed on sweet things like nectar and tree sap. And you can spot male mosquitoes by their extra fuzzy antennae, which they use to detect pheromones that are released by the female mosquitoes. Now, as you probably know, mosquitoes can carry very dangerous diseases. In fact, some historians have claimed that mosquito-borne illnesses like malaria and dengue fever have killed half the humans that have ever lived throughout history which is just a crazy statistic to think about. Thankfully today, due to the development of life-saving vaccines, the number of people dying from mosquitoes is much, much smaller than it used to be. But it's still a serious problem with around a million people dying from mosquitoes every year, mostly due to malaria. It's been estimated that there's about 110 trillion mosquitoes worldwide. So if we wanted to get rid of mosquitoes entirely, we'd need every human on the planet to go outside and kill around 14,000 mosquitoes. That's right, there's 14,000 mosquitoes for every single human on earth. However, if you jump to the next slide, Mr. C, you'll see that some mosquitoes might be worth keeping around. 
This mosquito that I photographed in the Colombian Amazon is undoubtedly the most beautiful mosquito I've ever seen. And I actually managed to trick it into mistaking my iPhone case for, a, uh, for some skin that it thought it could get a meal from um, while I was taking this photo. So that was, that was quite lucky. All right, on to the next slide, please, Mr. C. So we're gonna be entering the world of spiders in the next few slides. So I thought I'd ease you in with the cutest spiders of all. These are called jumping spiders. Most of them are tiny and would easily fit on your fingernail. And they're often very colorful with huge puppy dog eyes when you look at them up close. In Australia, we have a number of jumping spiders that are called peacock spiders. And that's because they have a brightly colored butt, which they put up in the air and shake around when they're trying to attract a mate. They even use their legs to perform a little dance routine while they're doing it. And it's adorable. And if you're looking for the best spiders to help you overcome a fear of spiders, it's definitely these little jumping ones. But the spider in our next slide is a little more dangerous. So this spider here is a wandering spider. They're found in the jungles of South America and they're one of the few spiders in the world that has a couple of human deaths to its name. They've got an extremely potent venom and they have the habit of hiding in cool, dark places like inside your shoes or in piles of dirty laundry. Now, in order to take this photo, I had to get my camera within about an inch of this spider's deadly fangs. And yet I was completely calm when doing this. Why? Because I know how spiders behave. Contrary to popular belief, there is no spider on earth that is aggressive. A spider will never chase you and it will never attack you for no reason. If a spider bites you, it's because it felt threatened and had no other choice. I want you to imagine for a second being a wandering spider. You've just found a cozy new hiding spot inside of a shoe. You're dozing, having a nice little nap, when all of a sudden a gigantic monkey the size of a skyscraper decides to put its foot in your new house. You have half a second to react, otherwise you're going to be squished to death. You only have one way to defend yourself, so what do you do? you bite the big toe that's coming towards your face. On the other hand, this wandering spider in this photo was sitting happily on a leaf in the jungles of the Peruvian Amazon. I moved in slowly and carefully to take the photo. The spider knew I wasn't a threat, and if it did feel threatened, it could turn and run away. These spiders will even raise their front legs as a warning sign if they feel threatened. They really don't want to bite you, and will only do so as a last resort. The same goes for all spiders and bugs of any kind. If you can see them and they can see you, you have absolutely no reason to be afraid of them as long as you're being respectful. All right, next up is one of my favorite spiders on the planet. This here is the net casting spider. And they're called that because rather than spinning a web like a regular spider, they make a net instead. When hunting, they sit patiently and they wait for an unsuspecting insect to walk or fly underneath them. When they do, the spider drops the net down from above and envelops its prey, lifting it up and then starting to devour it. Some of the abilities that spiders have developed through evolution are utterly mesmerizing. And if you click the next slide, we'll meet another one of my favorites. So these spiders, start off with a pretty regular spider web, but then they get creative. They grab the middle of the web and they pull it backwards in order to create a slingshot. So that little orange speck in this photo, that's the spider. And much like the net casting spider, it sits and waits for something to fly past the web. And when it does, the slingshot spider releases its slingshot and springs forward in an attempt to catch the insect. If you come across one, you can actually set them off by clicking your fingers. And interestingly, when they release that slingshot, they are the fastest moving spider in the world, traveling at speeds of 13 feet per second. 
All right, on to the next slide where we go from the fastest spider in the world to one of the slowest. We're getting into the world of really big spiders now. This is one of the most beautiful spiders I've ever come across. This earth tiger tarantula is a bit bigger than your hand and it's known for its stunning bluish purplish legs. I photographed it in the jungles of Borneo many years ago, only a few months after I bought my first camera. That hole in the tree that you can see is its nest. And one of the staff members at the research station pointed it out to me. The first night I waited for about half an hour and the spider never came out. The second night it was sitting with only its front legs out of the nest. And I got a couple of pretty crappy photos. But the third night I came back and it was sitting like this. And I finally managed to get some good photos. Tarantulas are super shy spiders and the slightest disturbance will send them scuttling back into their nest. Often it can take hours for them to come back out again. So I had to tiptoe while taking this photo to make sure it didn't run away. Okay, onto our final spider with the next slide. So this one is definitely gonna separate the arachnophobes from the rest of you. So this is a close up of a wolf spider, but I want you to take a really close look at it and put your hand up if you notice anything interesting. All right, what have we got? What do we think? It has like eggs on its back or whatever. Those are babies. It has what on its back? Uh, like eggs, like spider eggs and spiders. Yeah. Spider eggs. What? Oh, pretty, pretty close. They're not actually eggs. The eggs have already hatched. These are little baby spiders. So if you click on the next slide, you'll get a, a better view of it. But this is actually a mother wolf spider. Oh, have we lost Mr. C, have we? Has he run away? Too scared of the spiders? Yeah, that happens. All right, so this is actually a mother wolf spider carrying her hundred or so babies on her back. She looks after them for about a week or so once they hatch and she'll keep doing all of her normal activities at the same time. She'll continue to hunt and eat and sleep all while carrying around hundreds of her clingy kids on her back. That is some impressive parenting. All right, on to the next slide, please. Hopefully the video should play. This here is a giant Darwin scorpion, photographed under both UV and regular light. If you ever wanna go out looking for scorpions, the best thing that you can do is buy a cheap ultraviolet light because scorpions will glow in the dark when exposed to UV. Scorpions are arachnids like spiders, meaning that they have eight legs, but what makes them unique is their long tail with a stinger attached to the end. If you look really closely, you can even see a tiny drop of venom on the end of this scorpion stinger. This, this particular scorpion is native to Australia and it is one of the largest scorpions in the world. But interestingly, it's actually the small scorpions that you need to be careful of because they tend to have a much more dangerous venom and they can often be much harder to see. All right, next photo, please, Mr. C, because... I knew you were trouble when you walked in. All right, everyone say hello to the Taylor Swift scorpion. Sorry, sorry, Taylor's whip scorpion. I always stuff that one up. Uh, these are one of the creepiest looking bugs in the world. They're arachnids, like spiders and scorpions. But despite their name, they're not actually scorpions at all. They're something different altogether. What's cool about Taylor's whip scorpions is that despite looking absolutely terrifying, 
these bugs are completely harmless. They couldn't hurt you even if they wanted to. So if you happen to look down and see a tailless whip scorpion crawling on you, feel free to sit back and admire its dangly long legs. Alternatively, if you're still creeped out by them, I guess you could um, shake it up, shake it up, uh, uh. Sorry, that'll be the last of my Taylor Swift references, I promise. <laughs> On to the next slide, please, Mr. C. Okay, this is one of my all time favorite photos. And I wanna start by asking if anyone can guess what we're looking at here. Either fireflies or dragonflies. Oh, good guess. Pretty close. Does anyone else want to have another go? I or baby scorpions. What was that? Baby spiders. Baby, baby spiders or baby scorpions. Oh, great guesses. Yeah. Um, really, really creative. I love it. Uh, fireflies is actually what I would think this is if I hadn't taken the photo myself. Um, quite a tricky one. So what we're actually looking at here is thousands of termites on their annual nuptial flight. Now, we tend to think of termites as those annoying insects that eat your house, but they're actually absolutely incredible creatures. In Outback Australia, you'll often find hundreds of termite mounds that can be up to four meters tall in a small area and each nest contains thousands and thousands of termites. A single termite colony can consume as much grass as a cow every day. Now, a small percentage of termites in a nest have wings, and one night every year, all of the winged termites fly away from the nest in the hopes of finding a mate and starting a new colony. They even synchronize this with all of the other termite nests in the region so as to maximize genetic diversity of the new colonies. This photo here was taken using a technique called long exposure. So I had a big light behind my camera, which was illuminating all of the flying termites from underneath. And then you can set your camera to allow light in for several seconds, which gives you these long trails that highlight the flight paths of the termites. But the story of the nuptial flight isn't over yet. Next slide, please, Mr. C. So what's particularly interesting is that when two of the wings termites find each other and decide that they're going to try to start a new colony together, they also decide that they don't need their wings anymore. This is basically the termite equivalent of getting married. And both of the termites drop their wings, probably to demonstrate that they're not going to be flying away on their new partner. So this photo is actually particularly dramatic because it shows a lonely termite searching for a partner on a bed of wings created by other termites who have already found love. Just heart-wrenching stuff. Do we have a question? Is that a wasp? That is a termite. It's actually the, uh, one of the world's largest termites, that one. I've forgotten the name of it now. I think it's like the Darwin giant termite or something like that. Why, why is its head not attached to its body? Uh, so its head is what you, is the black thing that you can see in the middle. And then the wings go backwards from it. And the wings are sort of covering the termite's body. So this is one of the winged termites. Makes sense. We're talking about the, the, he was talking about the thing on the top left, the yellow thing. Oh, that's you can see where my... huh. Yeah. No, I've never noticed that before. It could well be a head because if you click on the next slide, we're going to talk about all the things that eat termites. <laughs> so it could very well be a head that's been left behind by something that was trying to eat the termites. Um, so as if the last photo wasn't sad enough, Almost all of the termites don't actually succeed in creating a new colony. 
something like 95% of them die trying, largely because the nuptial flight of the termite is a smorgasbord of food for anything that likes to eat termites. This image here shows a trapjaw ant taking down one of the termites, despite only being about a third of its size. Trapjaw ants are called that because they have one of the fastest jaw closing speeds in the animal kingdom. They can close their mouths about 2000 times faster than the blink of an eye. I remember watching these ants taking down as many termites as they possibly could. They would catch the termites by their wings with their jaws and then use their stinger to paralyze them. After that, three or four ants would come along and carry the termite back to the nest. It was brutal. So yeah, the nuptial flight of the termite is one of my all time favorite natural spectacles. It's absolutely incredible to witness. Okay, next slide please, Mr. C. All right, this is the last photo in the presentation. And honestly, I just wanted to include it because it is hands down the most beautiful insect I have ever seen. This is an Amazonian leaf footed bug that I photographed in the jungles of Peru earlier this year. They're about two inches or so in size, and they have these incredible expansions on their back legs that mimic leaves. The iridescent colors on them are just absolutely stunning. And if you want my contender for the most artistic insect in the world, I think it has to go to this Amazonian leaf footed bug. Okay, next slide, please. So thanks so much for listening, everyone. Um, if you want to check out more of my photography, you can follow on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I'm sorry, I'm just not cool enough to have a TikTok yet, but maybe one day. Um, you can also find everything on my website. And I've also put together a folder, which Mr. C is going to share with you all. And in it, you'll find a copy of this presentation, some more photos that I wasn't able to include today, as well as a list of articles that I've written about some of my favorite bugs. Okay, onto the final slide, please. So I've definitely been talking too much. That is all from me. I actually stole this photo from one of my friends because it was too good not to put on this last slide. Um, but I want to open it up to questions now. So please raise your hand, like this jumping spider, if you have anything that you would like to ask. Yeah, come on up. In the, um, in the Amazon rainforest, did you see any like predator predators, like a panther or something? Uh, predator predators, what did I see? I saw, I really wanted to see a jaguar, but they're really rare. Um, so I wasn't lucky enough to see one of those. I did see uh, some caiman, which are like big crocodiles. They were about four or five, five meter crocodiles, massive. Um, and there was one time I was out uh, at a spider monkey research station and we were out tracking these spider monkeys and we came across one of the monkeys that had been taken by, we think either a puma or a jaguar. And I don't want to gross you guys out too much, but it was a pretty, pretty gruesome spectacle to see what this, this uh, big cat had done to this poor, poor monkey. Any other questions? Yeah, we got a few more. Cool. Remember the, like, the, the thing with the long legs, like the scorpion with the long legs? The, the Taylor Swift scorpion? Yeah, that one. Why would you want to watch it crawl up your leg? <laughs> I think they're pretty, they're pretty cool. Like, so the, the Taylor Swift scorpions, what they've got is they've got these They've got eight legs, but the front pair of legs, the very front legs, they've basically evolved into antennae. So they use them to feel around. And those front legs can be uh, like from your shoulder to the end of your hand in length, like massive. These things are huge. And yeah, I mean, it's not everyone's cup of tea to have a big bug crawling on them, but at least you know with a Taylor Swift scorpion that they can't hurt you. 
Like as all you have to do is get over that weird sort of creeped out feeling and you know that that, that insect isn't going to hurt you. Bad. I want to hold every single spider on that list. <laughs> uh, bad. Probably, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise holding the wandering spider. That would. Um, that if it decided that it didn't like you, which it probably wouldn't, um, then yeah, that that wouldn't end too well for you. But in general, yeah, absolutely, go for it. Um, just all I would say is the majority of spiders. Yeah, you can pick them up. You can have a look at them, but learn your spiders first okay i don't want to get into trouble telling you you can pick up all the spiders when you you can't really but in general yes most of them you can have you ever been bitten by one of the spiders that you took a photo of i have never been bitten by a spider um and i have spent a lot of time traipsing through the jungles of random places and often at night uh, when spiders are most active um, and no I've never been bitten because as I was saying earlier as long as you're respectful towards the spiders as long as you can see them and they can see you you're going to be fine does the jumping spider bite uh, it's not big enough to bite you uh, but yes, yes, it does. Um, jumping spiders are actually, for their size, uh, amazing predators. So there's actually one species of jumping spider in Australia, which they've shown has object permanence, which is basically to say that if you take or if you, if you make an object disappear, they are able to remember that that object is there. And that's something that's uh, human babies only develop when they're about like two, two years old. Um, so some of these jumping spiders are really, really intelligent and they're really impressive hunters. All right, uh, here's Keenan again. So one time, like I was scrolling on YouTube and I found that dude gets bit by bullet ants. And he, he, I thought he was just going to take and be like that, but he'd be like screaming and yelling and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What's that guy's name again? Something uh, Safari. 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 Yeah. So it's actually, it's interesting. I've, I've met a few people who've been bitten by bullet ants and some of them said it was horrendous and awful. And then other people actually said it wasn't as bad as they thought it was going to be. So I don't know, maybe there's something biological that some people react worse than others. I don't, yeah, it's a bit strange, but I certainly wouldn't recommend trying it. All right, here's another question. Uh, what spider is that in the picture? That there is a type of jumping spider. It's a peacock spider actually in Australia. Um, and the peacock spider is the, they're the ones that do the, the fancy butt dances when they're trying to attract a mate. Um, and that's actually exactly what this spider is doing here. This photograph was taken midway through one of his dances while he's trying to show off to a, a lady spider that he, he quite likes the look of. Well, that's, uh, that's probably all the questions we have time for. The kids are going to have to pack up. No worries. But, uh, thank you so much. Round of applause for Mr. Brody. No, thank you, guys. Lovely to meet you all, and thank you for paying attention. Um, feel free to pass on any other questions to Mr. C, and he'll email me, and I can respond back. But, yeah, have a great day, guys. Lovely to meet you all. Thank you so much.